अखंडमंडलाकारम व्याप्त ये नाचर तत्पम दर्शित ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम हरि ओम नमो भगवते श्री रामकृष्ण टुडे वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम द बुक होली मदर श्री शारदा देवी रिटर्न बाय स्वामी गंभीरानंद जी वी आर इन ए चैप्टर पेज नाइनटीन फर्स्ट रीडिंग्स एंड देन वी शैल रिफ्लेक्ट ऑन सम ऑफ द पॉइंट्स पेज नाइनटीन वॉट एवर द मोटिव ऑफ द होली मदर माइट हैव बीन हर डिवोशन टू द मास्टर सर्विस ऑफन केम इन टू कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विथ इज नैचुरली हाई टोल मोरलिटी एंड अनकॉम्प्रोमाइजिंग प्रैक्टिकल वेरासिटी फॉर दो द टू हार्ट्स बीट इन यूनिसन दे हैड टू एक्सप्रेस दर फीलिंग्स थ्रू कॉम्प्लेक्स ह्यूमन मीडिया एंड येट सच अपेर एंड डिजॉर्मनी प्रोड्यूस्ड सर्टन रिमार्केबल सिचुएशन विच आर फुल ऑफ डीप इम्पोर्ट फॉर अदर्स we have noticed how the truthful master suffered physically on coming to learn that he had been taking more milk than he thought he was actually doing though as a matter of fact that diet has been improving his health all the time we do another we had used another instance of this kind one day the master saw that the pouch in which were kept for him some digestive spices to chew at will was empty and he went to the mother to get some the mother handed over to him a pinch of anise seeds and jowan that is lowage psychotis coptica and gave him a little more in a packet of paper saying take this he took it and started for his room but as a man of renunciation he had vowed not to stock anything for the future hence this slight infringement had an adverse effect on him some unknown force carried him to the southern nagabath on the ganges not finding the way to his room but rather the river in full tide he said mother should i drown myself should i that was in the early days of mother's life at dakshineswar she was in a predicament for being extremely shy she could not rush to his rescue nor could she stand quiet just then a brahmin of the temple happened to pass that way with whose help she called in her there and had the master taken to his room we should ponder a little to realize how difficult it was to serve this god man while men have their own methods of being pleased and the gods have their hymns and worship in the case of god in human form such as was the master it seemed as if only a divine woman like the holy mother could meet all his requirements though the mother made the service of the master the one goal of her life she did not deprive others of the privilege on the contrary when occasion demanded she made way for others though such forced separation from the master meant insufferable desolation for her she used to carry his food to his room at night but once the master asked golapma to do so from that day on the mother entrusted golapma with the task the mother could hitherto meet the master at least once in a day but the new arrangement deprived her of that opportunity Golapma's nature was such that though she was a spiritual soul of a high order and had intense devotion for both the master and the mother she could not understand the feelings of others but was led by her own sentiments and this to such an extent that even when she meant no harm but rather tried to do a good turn to others she in fact hurt people's feelings once she said to the mother mother manmohan's mother was complaining manmohan mitra 
and his mother were devotees of the master. Rakhal married Manmohan's sister before he renounced the world and became Swami Brahmananda. Manmohan's mother was complaining. The master is very ascetic and yet the mother wears these earrings and other ornaments. Does that look nice? Defeated by worldly wisdom, the mother laid away that very day all her ornaments except a pair of bangles. When next day Yogi Inma came and argued against such false sentimentality, she put on one or two pieces, but she never again wore all of them. For soon after the master developed cancer in his throat, so that her mind could no longer think of personal adornment. Be that as it may, let us return to the topic of serving food. Golapma used to be with the master long after evening. Sometimes she returned to the Nabal at 10 o'clock. This caused much inconvenience to the mother, for she had to keep watch over the food in the veranda of the Nabal. One night, the master heard her saying, it doesn't matter if a cat or a dog eats the food. I can't go on watching it. He realized the difficulty of the mother and warned Golapma. But she followed her own line of thought and said, No, mother loves me very much and addresses me as she would her own daughter. It was not strange, therefore, that it took a woman of her temperament quite a long time to understand the feelings of the mother and to entrust the duty to her again. For this long period, the mother kept her misery all to herself, remaining content with the glimpses she had of him from afar. Absolutely selfless, though this extraordinary service was, not all could appreciate it. Not only that, but it gave rise to jealousy in the hearts of worldlings, which at times found expression in words. And hence, such ignorant criticism did not totally escape the mother's ears. Once a woman asked her bluntly, Why do you go to the master? The innocent holy mother took others' words at their surface value. Moreover, she ever tried not to be a cause of annoyance to others. Thus, with a view to composing others' minds, she often invited unnecessary mortification on herself, and this she bore without a murmur. In the present case, she readily understood that the woman sought an opportunity of serving the master, and accordingly she refrained from her part of the work for some time. Those were painful days, for she had done nothing more than fleeting glimpses of the master as he passed at nightfall by her door on his way to Jhao grow in the north. And at times that privilege too was denied. This is three paragraphs I read. It's really so sad to read these incidents in mother's life. You see, in the normal way, as a girl is married to a boy and they stay together and lead a householder's life, it was not like that. As a young age, mother got married and after 15 years she came to see master. And at the age of 17, 16, she was with the master in Dakshineswar. But that young girl, could she not stay with her husband, even though the young girl understood the master's mind? Master is all renouncing sannyasi. Though he was married to Holy Mother, he lived a sannyasi's life. And Mother has already told him, I have not come here to drag you down. You are seeing Mother Kali in me, so I will support you. I will always follow you, whatever you say. So, she has never dragged him down. But 
will she her not will she her not heart not yearn for at least serving him that serving how she could do she could prepare food for him and bring the food to his room sit with him while he is eating she will talk with him that was the only privilege she had that is also was taken away you can imagine a young girl like that who has understood master very well and she would not disturb in any way but is it wrong to expect from her from her not to expect to be with the master for some time when golapma came golapma said i will take the food to master so and she put the food on the veranda and goes inside and sitting with the master and go on talking spiritual subjects and up to 10 o'clock night they are talking and the food here outside is getting cold and mother is sitting in navel and watching in the veranda and golapma is not coming out neither she could go there yeah. with the result she was sitting one day she shouted you see you can understand her difficulties she shouted if cat and dog comes and eats that food i am not going to look into that so she went inside master heard that she understood the pain in her heart and then he released go home okay okay now you go early after feeding me you take it away so that she can come and sit with me and talk a few words and what they talk they talk about god only so mother wanted that and this understand without understanding that so how much people used to comment and golapma only later realized ah i have done a great mistake i should have allowed mother to come and be seated with the master and then she would have talked something and this golapma was a well meaning daughter like to mother but then she was outright spoken she would not mince words whatever comes to her mind she would simply butt it out and she had good sentiments and good intention but because she was telling out so blandly and blankly people would get upset she would hurt others so one day she was telling the mother you know it is like taking the news from one place and take, giving the news to others manon's mother came to dakshineswar one day and then she saw holy mother wearing not only bangles she has got this uh, uh, decoration nose decoration and other decoration that every woman has got she is wearing so young girl naturally she will wear the golden things ornaments will be there every girl must be adorned she says holy mother herself says so at that time this manmohan's mother came somewhere and she just commented to others and this golapa was sitting there and listening to them she said master is a tagishura he is full of tyaga and is a sanyasi and the wife you see she is decorating herself like that see she didn't even see the age of mother that young girl wants to put on something what is there and this golapma went and told holy mother so how funny she is telling mother master is very ascetic and the mother wears these ear rings and other ornaments does that look nice you see people will talk always like that so see this mother immediately what she did she took out all her ornaments and put down she was not wearing all that not except the pair of bangles you see a, a married woman must not remain without the ornaments when somebody used to come to holy mother and if she is a married girl mother would say where are your ornaments why don't you come with the ornaments that's why you find in our temples in all the devi temples you find mother divine mother is always decorated with a lot of ornaments ornaments are required for a woman so 
this this she took out everything without bangles she only except bangles she took out all the ornaments next day yogin ma came like golapa yogin ma also is a devotee of master and yogin ma is very practical lady she looked at mother and said what has happened to you you have removed all your ornaments and you know generally in indian custom the widows only remove all the ornaments mm. after the husband passing away not the women who have got husbands living they don't remove so she said why you have removed all these ornaments not only they are beautiful but also it signifies that you have got a husband your husband is living still mm. and why did you remove so yogin ma was said she said these are false sentimentality somebody will talk something and for that you will remove no no put on one or two pieces like that she told but holy mother never again wore all of them and see that is somewhat a particular type of time that when holy mother stopped wearing all these ornaments at that time master got the cancer of throat so he fell sick and when a husband is sick no woman decorates herself with the ornaments you see that was happened so automatically she could never wear the ornaments again and with that uh, weak body master was removed to kashipur and there he passed away so there was no occasion for holy mother again to wear all those ornaments except the bangles only bangles she had then the author says swami gambiran ji says mother's mind could no longer think of personal adornment that means personal decoration she could never think and also we saw how that golapma was used to spend lot of time with master and holy mother had no time to go and talk to her and also you see even little fleeting of moments only she had to see master and go to him and talk as a wedded wife does she not have the right to go and talk to him though in his room always people are coming devotees are coming bhajan going on music going on and god hardly talks are going on so many people are coming and she has, she was very busy in cooking etc but still does she not need at least a few moments to go to him and inquire about his health and look at his comforts should she not do it she was doing that but the wagging tails you know the talks the how they talk so one lady bluntly said why do you go to the master's room like that she told this much also privilege she could not have so the innocent holy mother when others speak like that the others words become very real to her she takes them very seriously and then she stopped going to master's room and you can understand a young girl whose married husband is there she could not go and talk to him she has sacrificed a lot because master was a sanyasi she has sacrificed her life for him in spite of that somebody is asking why you are going to the master's room that was very stern and that was not proper and without any murmur she stopped going to his room and then she says she readily understood that woman who was telling mother like that actually she wanted to go to master's room and serve master so to stop the mother like this she commented like that those were the painful days she had nothing more than fleeting glimpses of the master as he passed at nightfall by her doors you see the navat was here and master's room was here and if you go by this route passing the navar in that jhautala jhautala is where master used to do ablutions 
so he has to go for ablutions in the late night he would go because there was no bathroom or anything in those days so he would take his pot of water and use walk that was the time mother used to stand behind the door of the navar and look at him in the dim light he could look at master own husband and from that inside the room she would stand and look at him because it was night she can't go and talk to him also that was the case one can understand what painful days has gone by for the mother and when we read these things you know her pain in her heart that not able to serve the master and was such a terrific thing you know we actually we get tears in our eyes and at times that privilege too was denied because some disciple would be there and he would go with the master up to jawtala and so he could she could not come out also to see master what a painful days she had spent in those days this shows you know that sri sarada devi was ready not only to suffer but ready to bear all the sufferings without any complaint this is one of the great teaching that we learn from her life how she is that so wonderful in her life that she doesn't murmur for the sufferings that she get she doesn't tell others these were all passing by others tell and the author could find out this incidents how what happened in the chinese well but you just imagine that how it is another incident here very interesting incident is there that master being a sanyasi he doesn't want to store anything for the future this is something a great quality of the master she has seen that master used to take after lunch or supper he used to take some seeds like this anise jowan jowan he would put it in mouth they are called you know mouth freshener now it is modern mouth freshener is available but in those days they would take jowan and then they will fry it and then they if they take it two three pieces you put it in his mouth and then and he will go on munching that so that is a mouth freshener so master used to have he used to have a pouch in the pouch he would keep it so whenever he is interested he would take out the pouch and then put it in his mouth so that is what one day he found the pouch was empty so he went to holy mother nabar and said see my pouch is empty why don't you fill it up so what she did the master saw the pouch in which were kept for him some digestive spices to chew at will so he used to chew at whenever he wanted digestive spices like jowan it was empty so mother handed over to him a pinch of anise seeds and jowan and gave him a little more in a packet of paper saying take this what has happened here is that we understand the character of master you see if you give extra that means you keep this extra in future when you require you can use it that is the purpose of mother's giving because mother's heart was like that but master cannot accept extra things today what i want you must have given me but more than today's needs you have got so when he took that he lost the way from navar to his room it was just opposite he could not go there and he was moving straight away to the ganges side and ganges was full of flood at the time and near coming nearer to the ganges he thought hey i have got extra that means i am not a sanyasi i am storing for tomorrow it is not good so should i drown myself like that he was thinking See, his mind is like that. He cannot accept anything extra, and he is standing like that. And mother could watch it, and she was so shy; she cannot run and stop him from there. And she is only surprised, and she is praying to mother, divine mother, hey, help him. At that time, one Brahmin came, and he saw Ram Krishna standing there, 
and if you fall down there in the Ganges, so he slowly took him in his hand and slowly brought him there. So he says, he took it and started for his room, but as a man of renunciation, he had vowed not to stock anything for the future. Hence, slight movement, again going away from the sight, slightly from his vow, create an adverse effect. An effect that is contrary to normal effect. It's called adverse effect. It created in him. So, some unknown force, he could not know who took him. Instead of going to the southern Navad, he went out to the Ganges side. Not finding the way to his room, and when the river is in full tide, he said, Mother, should I drown myself? Should I? You can understand how mother, standing there, could not rush to his rescue. Even though she is married uh, to him as a wife, she should have rushed to him when her husband is in danger. But she could not rush, and she was standing there only praying. Just then, luckily, a Brahmin of the temple, he came. What he did? And then he called the help of Hridaya also. So the Hridaya and this Brahmin came and take, took the master to his room. So the author Swami Gambiranaji points out, you can serve an ordinary human being. Even then, there are so many difficulties of serving a man. We have seen some old monks and the brahmacharis were deputed to serve the monks. Sometimes the brahmachari would come and tell me, Maharaj, you have put me to serve that monk. So difficult to serve the monk. He has got certain peculiarities. And I have to adjust with every peculiarity so that he can be kept happy. Sometimes, he stands on my nerves. I don't want to serve him. Like that he would come and say, in an ordinary being. And monk, of course, is special and he finds it difficult. Think of a God-man like Ramakrishna. How difficult it will be to adjust to his things. Because his ethical standards, his moral standards, his spiritual level are all much, much higher than ordinary human beings. And ordinary human, human brains, sometimes you may cajole them. You may just make them forget. And you can serve them also. But with Ramakrishna, nothing such can be done. He cannot be fooled. He is so strict on his principles. How difficult to serve him. That's why the author says, we should ponder a little to realize how difficult it was to serve this God-man. Oh, he says, men have their own methods of being pleased. So if a man you bring some hot water, he is pleased. And if you serve him whatever he likes, in a way he wants to put the table in such a way, you put it, he is pleased. So there are many ways one can understand how a man is pleased and you can serve him. Also, gods also can be pleased. Today is Monday, somebody says, Monday, this coming Monday, if you are free, you all can come on Monday at 9 o'clock. We are going to do this Abhishek for Lord Shiva here. Okay. And Monday is a very good day and Sydney devotees are coming. So the one of the Sydney devotees that uh, Mr. Kumar, he is very good in chanting Rudram and Chamaka. Okay. He chants very beautifully. He has learnt very well and he will do the Abhishek. What time, sir? At 9 o'clock. So, if you all come, then we can sit and we can see that. I will also sit and watch how he does. So he's a very brilliant man that way. So, he's going to do that. So, now we say, on a Monday, Somavaram, on a Monday, if Shiva is given Abhisheka and given Rudram and Chamakam chanting, if you do, he's pleased. Like that, for Perumal, for Vishnu, on a Saturday, you do Vishnu Sasarnamam. He is pleased. On a Friday morning, if you get up and take bath and do Lalita Sasarnamam, Devi is pleased. 
Like that, every God has got a method to please. A human can be pleased in his own methods and gods also can be pleased. Now, the problem with a God-man. The human qualities are also there, godly qualities are also there. How difficult it is to please this God-man. That's what the author wonders. See, Ramakrishna was a God-man because he was an avatar. So, he says, how in case of God in human form, who can please him? And he comes to a very good conclusion. He says, if Sri Ramakrishna is pleased, a God-man has been pleased, it is no ordinary woman can do that. Only a divine woman can do this, please him. That's why he brings the character of Holy Mother in this small incidence. He says, what a beautifully the sentence you see. In the case of God in human form, such as was the master, it seemed as if only a divine woman like the Holy Mother could meet all his requirements. Whatever master needed, she could only please. Ordinary human persons cannot please him. What a wonderful Holy Mother was that. Hmm. Tannama Shravana Priyam, like that Avidhananji says. Master's name, if you tell, Holy Mother is pleased. So, she was like a Hanuman. Hanuman was there, almost, he considered himself as a slave of Ram. He says, Rama Dasa. He said, Dasa means say, a obedient servant. He said, I am obedient servant of the Master Ram. And if you go to Hanuman temple, you go to one important thing in Hanuman temple is that you go to any other God's temple, you say the hymns attributed to that God. If you go to Shiva temple, you say Shiva hymns. You go to Perma temple, then you say Vishnu hymns. Like the Devi temple, Devi hymns. But everywhere that particular deity is praised. In Hanuman temple, if you praise Hanuman, he is never happy. Then whose name you should take before Hanuman? Lord. Ram's name. Lord Ram's name you take, Hanuman is very, very happy. Likewise, in Holy Mother's place, when you go to Holy Mother, you tell Holy Mother all the strains, etc. Now she is not pleased. When you take Ramakrishna's name, she is extremely pleased. That is why Abhidhananji writes in Prakritim Paramam, in that song, he says, oh, what a wonderful, he says, Tannama Shravana Priyam. She wants to hear always so dear to that name, the Ramakrishna name she wants to hear. So when she go, you go to her, you say Ramakrishna's name, she is very well pleased. That divine, the divinity of Holy Mother, he gives out very beautifully. Let us proceed further the next week. Om Kripam Kuru Mahadevi Suteshu Pranateshu Cha Charanasraya Dhanena Kripamayina Mostute Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tassat Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastur